Blau und weiß sein Leben lang. Willkommen zum einzigen Schalke Podcast auf Englisch. This is episode 151 of Schalke America. I'm your host, Richard Carmen, and joining me as always for our Victory Monday Hump Day edition, Jack Mangan. How you doing, Jack? Excellent. Victory Monday on a Wednesday, as you said. Uh, <laughs> First ever. Maybe deeper not. friend of mine had a birthday on Monday. We were out to dinner uh, celebrating, which is why I was occupied. Shout yeah. out, Jeez. And I was, and I was trying, and I was trying to buy a house, so both of us were occupied, so it worked out. Yes, but much, much better vibes on the podcast this week than perhaps uh, last week. <laughs> Maybe not. We'll see. I guess, but I, I would hope so. <laughs> um, we got to win. Yeah, yeah. And so, so I'm, uh, I'm, I'm enjoying some mescal this evening. It's uh, 65 in Chicago land. It's, it's borderline tropical. It was um, 73 after... here today. There you go. There you go. So you got to kind of take advantage of it while you can. What's up, Anthony? See Anthony in the house. Uh, yeah, no, it's been crazy weather here. Um, I'm itching to be outside now. I hope the coldness is gone from here. We'll, we'll see. Uh, but it's supposed to be raining tomorrow. Still warm. Uh, but Friday should be nice. So uh, definitely listen. Cranking some music all day long on Friday. So, But another reason to celebrate, we won. We won. Uh, new New manager. New manager bump. Maybe a, a new new face on the on the sidelines. Um, both Schroeder and Buskins positive with COVID, so they were not in, they were at the game. Uh, so Matthias Kreutzer was, was on the sidelines in this one. Um, three nothing win, Jack. Uh, good stuff in terms of results. <laughs> Last week we talked about kind of how. We were wondering if one of the rationales in Schroeder said for for releasing Gramatas was there that he was convinced that just any other coach could get the job done, and that it was like specifically Gramatas that was holding the team back somehow. Yeah. Um, and uh, I mean, nice data point in that direction when the new coach isn't even in the stadium and picks up a nice three 0 win. I, I just, of course, because it's English shot, but um, <laughs> yeah, and, the, and then not even yeah, Buskins. It's it's Mateus Kreutz, like you said, yeah. um, on the sideline, but um. You know, not not the best performance overall. There's things to criticize. We'll talk about that. But ultimately, it's a comprehensive scoreline, and it's the kind of result that you need to get against, you know, an English dot team. Um, and a big result as well when you consider that um, top three teams in the table, uh, two draws and a loss up there. So uh, finally, we take advantage um, of a weekend where some of the, you know, the teams higher up than us, uh, you know, stumble and drop some points. It'd just be nice if we hadn't had some of these losses to, you know, Rostock and, and Dusseldorf and whatnot, because um, obviously we'd be in a much better position. That's the annoying thing, because that's the second time in three weeks we've took advantage of the top teams falling. Uh, but every other time we'd lost to the bottom team. So it's like, eh. um, but yeah, it's an interesting game for sure. Let's get into lineups. Let's get to our lineup real quick. Um, so... Starting lineup was slightly different, right? Frazzle and goal. Uh, Kaminsky, Tiao, and Itakura in the back. Not so different there. Uh, midfield, Flick in the holding midfield role once again. Cherlinov and Drexler in the middle with Chalanolu once again. And Ranful back in the lineup with Throat and Bulter up top. Um, thoughts on the midfield shuffling that went on and, and what you saw from the starting lineup? What's on status currently? Did I... Did I miss something is he out for any sort of significant period of time i, hope I, not. Think... I mean chelanolo is doing a good job but we need we need a way on right uh i haven't heard and if you heard in the chat please let us know we'll have to definitely look that up uh we should be ready yeah, if we if we stuff, miss but... some glaringly large announcement about him let us know but i, I was actually kind of surprised to see um chelanolo for a, a second uh consecutively obviously did very well last week um i thought that this was a significantly worse performance for him comparatively um but you know, it was, I mean, I, don't, I think, I just think like, you know, the, the Randful channel over pairing is not your ideal combination, but um, it, it was a four, four, two kind of, wasn't it in terms of a de -star default starting shape. So like, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like it, it's like not, there was moments where, um, you know, Itakura would drop between the other two center backs and basically revert to the sort of default buildup shape that we typically have in our, in our three, five, two formation or whatever you want to 
what do you want to call it? But it was a slightly different sort of like starting shape. Um, I don't know if that worked particularly well. Um, I think in the second half, when we kind of reverted to our normal system a little bit more, things started to uh, improve also with the addition of, of Solid Tower, which we'll talk about. Um, but uh, yeah, the Ranful, the Ranful thing, I'm not super thrilled to see him back. Drexler, I don't mind. He hasn't gotten a lot of looks recently, um, but I've always thought Drexler is usually pretty solid when he comes in there, if unremarkable, but usually he's not like somebody who's glaringly making mistakes. Yes. Um, yeah, uh, both of Trotta's great. It's just, you know, like this whole system that we started with, like Trolinov is playing like left mid, sort of. Yeah. Um, I, I would just kind of rather have him playing in place of Ranful back there. Um, and, and doing something else. So anyway, but uh, generally it was, it was, you know, fine. So Thomas Oyan had a slight injury. So Sane, Oyan, and Mehmet Aiden are all back training again. So we'll hopefully have them very here soon, which is good news. But uh, Chalanolo has been filling in very nicely, I think, so far. He seems to be the set-piece specialist when um, uh, Oyan's not there. So And he does actually pretty decent set-piece ability. Uh, but yeah, Ranful, I was happy to see Ranful over like Matriciani, right? Uh, but I agree with you. Trilonov should be the guy starting there, uh, and maybe see you know, that's, given... that's interesting because I, I don't even know if I agree with that. Which part? entirely, uh, like the Ranful over Matriciano, which is fine. This this will be interesting if we actually have like an agree a disagreement yeah, okay. on this podcast for once. But yeah, I, I just don't know. I I think I think at this point I almost would prefer Matriciani. I mean, Ranful did, did he contribute to like maybe that one big Torada chance early on or something? But like, yeah. yeah. But like beyond that, like I didn't I didn't think he was once again impactful almost at all How about uh, maybe a little bit more when the the game opened up in the second half before he was subbed off but just i don't know man it yeah uh, and it's not so much his contributions offensively right it's more about defensively he's a little bit better than matriciani and and may granted matriciani had a really bad game last game right um but i don't know i think i think defensively he brings a little bit more offensively neither of them contribute anything really right but it's offensively i think uh, Ranful has a little bit edge on on Matriciani, and that's why I, that's why I would go Ranful over him. I mean, either way, Trelinov should be starting over both of them, in, in our opinions. Uh, but maybe in this one, Buskin slash Kreutzer slash Asimo, whomever you want to call it, um, they decided to give Salazar a break from the start because he did seem to do well two weeks ago when he came off the bench. I think it was. I don't know if he started. I can't remember now. It's so long ago. Um, but Salazar started to come off the bench and played fairly well. So um, there's that. There's that. Uh, let's see. William chiming in says, uh, prefers to see Paulson back, of course. Uh, and also says, you know, prefers this back line. It feels like when Sonny is back there, he just no longer fits in the group anymore. You know, I'm going to, I tend to agree with William here because it seems like, and maybe it's recency bias. Obviously, Sonny is a fantastic player, but the last three, four weeks, I've been critical of him. A lot of people have. And I feel like he's, I don't know if he's playing injured or what. And maybe because he ha- he's, he was out injured, maybe that is the reason. But he hasn't been playing particularly well. And he's been a liability at times in the back. And Tiao has been solid when he when he fills in for him. Obviously, Itakura is solid. And Kaminsky has more good days than bad. Um, would you agree with Sané's assessment, my assessment of Sané? Or what are your thoughts on Sané um, overall? I, 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 I'm somebody who feels like the criticism of Sané is a, is a little bit excessive. Um, I'm not saying that like there can't be some of it, but I feel like the amount of it that I hear just for me, and like I said, just feel free to disagree again. This is actually like an interesting podcast in that respect, but like I feel, no, I just feel like as though it's as far as just an eye test thing, I I don't see him being the one who's like making a ton of mistakes necessarily. I know there's those moments where something happens and he's like pointing to somebody and you could make the argument, well, maybe you should have covered that or, but I mean, the the thing is ultimately he's been injured a lot over the past couple of seasons. So he's probably not really as match sharp as he needs to be in just terms of like the number of consistent minutes and everything. And, um, you know, when you have Malik Chow, Itakura, and Kaminsky playing the number of games that they have together consecutively, they're probably going to have better chemistry. There might be a couple of things that are just a little bit tighter. Um, and I don't know if that should be viewed as an indictment of, you know, Salif Sane as opposed to just a recognition that the other three had, had had a remarkable run of like durability and health and consistency. And they were just like, it was a constant fixture that frazzle. And then that back three was what we did for the vast majority of the season so far. Yeah, that is, that is fair. I think those three really do have a good chemistry together. Um, and we, you know, early in the season, we saw Itakura start in the middle. Now he's over to the right because maybe he feels more comfortable there. And, and Tiao is comfortable wherever in the back line. Uh, so, yeah, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. And, uh, yeah, while I, while I think Sané has been a liability lately, I, and I do think it's injury behind that. I don't think he's a shit player or anything like that. 
like many people are calling, right? They're like, oh, get him out of here. He sucks. I'm like, no, I think there's something behind his bad play because he's not typically the nice kind of player. So, and also the chemistry plays a big role, I think, in that too. I mean, anytime you got guys who, who are comfortable with each other, feeding off each other, can read each other, they play much better than two guys who just, you know, trying to fit, plug and play, whatever. So, yeah, no, that's, that's a fair shot there. Uh, looking at the lineup for English shot, Schnauzer, um, that's the wrong button there, buddy. In uh, goal, Stojanovic. Uh, they went with the back four of Gabauer, Antanic, uh, Misliu, and Franke. Midfield of Pick, Linsmeyer, Roll, and Bilbia. And then Kuchke and Schmidt up top. Um, that's about as far as much as I'll say about that lineup, Jack. Uh, nothing I was yeah, too worried about. I have no particular comments either. I'm just glad that, you know, <laughs> Buyulev is no longer there um, yep. to score against us because, you know, we have uh, seem to have a history of that. I did see this a couple minutes ago that Tia is apparently not fit for the weekend and they're looking at possibly Loda for the weekend. I mean, I know Sane's back chain. That's it's interesting. And maybe they maybe they go for a back four this weekend, right? And maybe you have um you know if, if Oyan's fit, you go Kaminsky and Itakura with maybe Oyan and Ranfold or somebody on the right. I don't know. Um interesting to see what Buskins and, and company will do with that. But uh yeah, hopefully it's nothing serious. Uh, for sure. Um, also not serious. Uh, pretty much the first half against Engelstadt. <laughs> Wasn't... I expect a lot more, right? We always talk about the new manager bump. And it's Engelstadt. So while we dominated possession and stuff like that, it was like something the game was like 29-71 or something crazy. We really didn't do much in that first half. I thought both teams had opportunities. Um, nothing really astonishing for me. I think it was just... Uh, Coming out and going into halftime 0 0, I was, and I didn't realize this at the time because I didn't watch the game live, but obviously I saw the replay. Um, but I was thinking following the game that Buskin's really got to say something in, in the locker room. Ended up being Kreutzer that ended up saying something in the locker room and it worked. But whatever they did in that first half, just they were too passive or where to make mistakes. I don't know. What, what were your thoughts on that first half uh, that, that's, that epic stalemate? Yeah, it was it was poor. Obviously, it wasn't nearly as good as you would expect when you're playing, um, you know, a bottom table side. Uh, what maybe like 15 or so shots overall in this game, just four on target out of that. So, um, yeah, there it is. You asked um, me, Steve. Yeah, so uh, not not like a, a huge output overall, decent output in terms of actual like shots taken. But I mean, look at the, the corners, seven to three in favor of Ingolstadt. That's crazy. Yeah. So it was, it was, you know, 71% possession, as you said, actually think, I think in both halves, it was 71, 29, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. it was like identical yeah. um, in terms of the game flow, but uh, yeah, just nothing coming of it in the first half. Is that, a, is that a, um, you know, uh, is that a symptom of the change in system and maybe some of the change in personnel possibly? I mean, one of the things we talked about last week, once again, going back to sort of the decision to get rid of Gramatis is, um, you know, at, at this point, you're, what, like 60% of the way, 70% of the way through the season. So is it worth making that change at this point and having somebody have to come in and like, you know, have a couple, you know, new ideas or like a new system. And maybe that takes three or four match days to really kind of get embedded in them to get as comfortable and proficient with it as they are with the current one. Do you have that kind of time? Do you have that kind of risk? And especially if it's going to be a caretaker manager who just says, all right, four, four, two and a bunch of vibes. And I don't want to like, you know, it, sell Buskin short. I know he only had like a week to work with the team and he was, and he was, you know, coronavirus, whatever. So it wasn't even really like taking charge of the team, but, um, but you know what I mean? It's just kind of unconvincing when you, when you do have a caretaker manager in the, the first game and they kind of just go a hey, four, four, two. And it's not that four, four, two can't be an effective formation in modern football, but it's just kind of like, you know, default organization. Yeah. It's what everyone re reverts to when they're trying to keep things simple. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think also that, um, the one thing that was glaring in the last however many games under Gramozis is that the defense was in shambles. They couldn't stop anything. We're very leaky. And again, against Ingolstadt, I thought it was much of the same. The reason they didn't score is because they don't have the scorers on the team. They're not clinical. I thought they had enough opportunities where they created some chances. I'm like, what are they doing? Like, what? Are, it's Ingolstadt. Like, come on now. Uh, but nonetheless, they kept the shutout. Uh, coming out of the second half, they did look better. They made some substitutions. Salazar came in. Uh, Drexler, I thought, you know, played a, had a good game overall. Um, but Ranfull with for Salazar, I thought, as soon as Salazar came in for Ranfull, I knew Trillonoff was going to go back to the right and Salazar in the middle, which we kind of expected, which we hoped for. 
And uh, immediately, you know, I, I, I didn't see who made the first pass, but ball goes into the box to uh, big man Toroto. Toroto plays it off. Uh, Salazar comes in like you're supposed to, takes a shot, kind of fortuitous, and went, went in the corner, scores a goal, one on nothing at that point. Um, I thought that was going to open the floodgates right away. It didn't, but it was at least a, a goal. Good to see Salazar get a goal after having such a – not the best of form in the last month or so. Yeah, it's it's. I mean, it's not even necessarily that he's had like terrible form over the last, but he just hasn't been selected as much. And maybe he had cooled off a little bit like prior to that. It's just yeah, uh, I've been I guess slightly surprised by how little he had been involved. Um, this is coinciding with the rise of like you know Idrizi, for example. So to some extent, like you're getting and Flick is in the lineup. Not that he's playing the same position necessarily as Alistar. So there are new people that you're starting to see get involved um to some extent but uh yeah and listen Sal- salsar ended up having a phenomenal second half we'll talk more about him uh this is what you get from him sometimes you have games where he's very inefficient and the ball is glued to his foot stays on his foot a little bit too long he's not circulating or involving his teammates you know yep. and it kind of gets sucked into possession a little bit um but other games he's moving the ball a little bit quicker and provides you the energy that you need is able to create some things and this was very much one of those so um yeah he did he did very well and and gave us the spark that we were lacking in the second half in addition i think partially kind of to reverting to the more comfortable shape um and system helped facilitate some things as well like i thought flick for example in that like pivot more pivot role like single pivot role like was much better in the second half overall than he was in the yeah. first half like he looked more comfortable in that system and seemed to be improving in possession and maybe that's because the salazar was in there like you said the system kind of changed back to what we're, we're more familiar with um and yeah um and let's just stay on the, the flick topic real quick because, you know, I think William or someone brought it up about Paulson. We we obviously love seeing Flick play more because we think he needs that kind of uh, pitch experience. Um, but I think at the present, we think, at least I'm, I, I'm, I don't want to speak for you, but I think Paulson is probably just ahead of him in the lineup right now. But I see eventually Flick taking over that role. I just think Paulson is better defensively uh, and can really – block things out and really is not as a liability. I mean, yes, it was a red card waiting to happen sometimes, but I think he's very solid back there. Would you not agree with Paulson probably has a slight edge over flick uh, currently, or what, what are your thoughts on, on the holding six? That was how I felt for most of the season. Uh, at this point, I, I honestly believe it should be like matchup dependent. Um, I really think I really believe I like that. that because, um, and once again, this first performance by flick was worse than the, than the last couple that he's had. This was a step down from him overall. Like I said, I do think he had a better second half, although he did um, have he caught in possession in the second half that led to, um, you know, a dangerous shot attempt. But um, uh, part of it, yeah, I, I, I just I, F- flick. I feel like if it's a game where um, we expect to be under a ton of pressure in possession. uh and potentially limited down the wings too. I, I feel like you just need Flick in there centrally because of what he can provide on the ball. Um, he can get out of danger in possession. He can find solutions quicker than Paulson. Is, Paulson's just very limited right. in, in the passing game. He's literally there to screen for his defenders, and, and there's some games that's going to be valuable, and you're going to want that, and that's preferable to Flick. But I think at this point, it's really just matchup dependent because I think you know Flick's offensive upside is just so much higher. And he also has that through ball ability. We saw that a few games ago where – He'll be get the ball deep and just launch a, a through pass that leads at least a breakaway like Cherlanov scored on. Uh, Flick, Flick was good on his long balls today, as were uh, Kaminsky and Malik Chow as well. Yes, and I think that's important for games like this where you need, like you said, game dependent. Um, having someone that has that ability, not only just your defenders, but if you have a midfielder that's doing it as well, it, it kind of opens up the play a lot. So yeah, no, I like that well, shot. I mean, so are you surprised that that Paulson wasn't immediately back into the starting lineup because he was available and he got subbed on today and did play? So are you surprised that like you do you think that's a sign potentially that the few performances that Flick has had recently have started to turn that tide in the eyes of the coaching staff. I do. Um, I, I, it's, it's, I'm not sure yet. Uh, I have a feeling that's what the case is, but you know, it could also be that maybe the, the managers don't want to push Paulson right now. He just coming back and give an opportunity to kind of get up to speed before you bring him back in the game. But I think Flick has certainly won him over. They feel confident with him. Otherwise they put someone else in there. Right. Uh, and so in such, these are important games. Now we have to pretty much run out. And, and the fact that you put in flick back there shows, I mean, uh, confidence in the kid. And so mm-hmm. I, I do see that. I do see it a little bit, but we'll see it. It take a few more games before you can really find out if that's the case or not. Flick was a little shot happy today as well. 
today. Yep. It's Wednesday. This happened on last weekend. But it was it, this game. He was a little shot happy this game. He got a little bit of like, you know, the Salazar bug in him where he's just kind of firing randomly. So he needs to cut down on that. But um, I did think it was funny that pretty much the first thing Paulson did when he did get subbed onto the pitch was absolutely tabletop some guy and commit like a harsh foul, which like in which he had literally just been suspended for the red card. So I was <laughs> like, all right, dude, like. Maybe just take a few plays off before you start throwing so the fired up. again. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Paulson. Uh, so that goal was in the 50th minute. Uh, wouldn't get another goal until 71st. It took a while. Uh, but this time, a Rodrigo Salazar corner kick. Uh, ball goes up. Somehow, this finds Malik Tia right in the middle. He just And he taps it in past the keeper. Fortuitous bounce off the defender, too, because I think the keeper mm-hmm. might have had that. He actually read it pretty well. But Correct. hit the defender. It went the other direction. Uh, and got past them. We'll take the goal. We'll take the goal. Two nothing. Love to see Malik Tiao score a goal. Yeah, I mean it was decent enough job by Malik just to get that off in the first place because he's kind of like falling away from goal a little bit. It's like kind a of volley weird. too, right? Yeah, I kind of sort of. It was a strange, strange kind of shot at an, an opportunity uh, going near post. There was a defender on the near post who ultimately, I think, kind of deflected it back sideways. And yeah, I do think you're right. The goalkeeper probably would have gotten there, but um, nice to get a set piece goal because as good as some of our delivery has been from wide areas. Um, in the run of play, uh, sometimes on some of these corners, we actually haven't had the set piece delivery that you would expect, um, given how good, you know, like once again, like, oh, on is it some of these things? Um, and I don't, I haven't actually been convinced by all of Salazar's crossing at times as well. Um, but you know, I guess he found a nice little soft pocket of space there and took advantage of it. I'm glad you brought that up because just 10 minutes later, Salazar doing a nice little dinky pass over the top, finds Drexler in a stride and, and, you know, as good as the pass was, I think Drexler did even better to corral that and put it away because he's not a Tarota. He's not a guy who's used to doing that, right? At least I, I think so. And so the way the fact that Drexler was able to corral that and put it in past the goalkeeper, uh, that was a good, great goal overall. The first two were like, eh, but the last goal was nice. Uh, great pass by Salazar, obviously, to, to see Drexler making that run. But Drexler put away, make it 3 nothing, put the game to bed. Um, that was relief, I think. Not that, that we weren't going to win anyway, but, I, you know, Finally seen a nice goal. It wasn't just like error, error, goal, error, goal, <laughs> left and right. Yeah, no, it was a really intelligent run by uh, Drexler, and he controlled it well and, and finished it. So props to him. Um, nice to get an offensive spark out of him. He doesn't score a ton of goals. He's set up a few. He has, a, he has to get some delivery at times, but he's more just kind of like your steady, you know, does the work in the midfield type of player. For the most part. Um, yeah. And it's a really nice delivery from Zalza. I initially wasn't convinced that he like meant to hit that to, uh, um, him and thought maybe he was just going for like you know a header to Torado or something. But the more I watched that, the more it looked like it had enough like power on it that he was trying to get it over. Um, and so yeah, if that was like an intentional read and in pass, it's a brilliant ball and brilliant execution all the way around. Um, and I wanted to shout out Cherlinov as well because the that uh, he ran with the ball like fifty yards, um, deked multiple defenders with some great footwork, and then handed the ball off to Zalatar right before he crosses it, basically. Yeah. So a lot that kind of getting us in that situation was largely facilitated by him. Um, I think he was like 100 percent on all of his dribbles today. I think he had like six or eight that good. he you know converted all of them essentially successfully. Um, so he was uh, phenomenal, especially once he got moved back to uh, you know that sort of right wing back position as you mentioned. Yeah, and I think it was a uh, good for both Chirlinov and and um, Drexler because I think both of them had really good games and decent games in, in this one overall. Um, as you said, Drexler doesn't really make mistakes. He's in there. He sometimes does really well. Sometimes he's he says the job, but um, scoring that goal was nice for him. I thought Chirlinov not playing in his position most of the game, half the game at least, um, did had a pretty good game. Turtle was involved. I mean, obviously going to be a, a step down after your your hat trick the, the week before. Bultor was okay, I thought. Chalonolu had another decent game, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, back three, and I guess Frazzle, to an extent, were all fairly decent. So um. my, my thing with Chalonolu is like um, he just lost like all of his duels in this game. Yeah, as did, did Ranful. Both of them, I mean, they just they just constantly were, we were can't losing have ground duels. Um, and that was uh, that wasn't like a problem for Channel Luglu in the previous performance at all. I don't really think, but um, yeah, that was a issue, especially I think in the first half. So. Uh, yeah, I, I don't want to be overly critical of the kid. I just thought, like, you know, there was a, a decent gulf between his two performances so far. But as you, the, the one thing that you mentioned is once again his delivery and everything. We saw that last week. We saw some of that again at times in this one. Um, he's a decent replacement for Oweyan in terms of what happens, sort of uh, mostly in possession and going forward. Uh, throughout the game, you kept seeing him and Drexler like setting up for the set pieces. I'm like, what is the conversation? Is Chalinola saying, look, hey, 
I'm related to Hakan. I can do free kicks, bro. Back off. Like, what, like every time, like, why is Drexler even showing up? He didn't get a chance to. Uh, and I, he probably has decent delivery too, right, from what I remember. But um, yeah, Chalnola has been has been decent. Some of them not so good, but he follows it up with a really good cross and stuff like that. So Drexler just has the right foot. There are so many times, you yeah, know, where he pops him on the left hand side and then stops just so he can turn and get on. But he plays good balls off of it, but he just cannot like cross a ball in with his left. It seems like sometimes reminds me of Zoolander or can't turn left or he, you know, I can't yeah. shoot left. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no, we, we can have fun now because we won the game. Uh, it was important too. And we had some, um, friends to help out with the, some of the results as well. Uh, Mr. Free Katuchu, Ahmed Katuchu helped score in a goal to make it one, one, um, against, where is that result? Um, who the hell did they play? Oh, Sandhausen, Sandhausen, Darmstadt. So that was a big result, right? So uh, Katuchu getting a goal there. Our friends at Nuremberg got a 3 0 win against Hanover. That kind of helped. Oh, I guess it didn't really help us, really. Hanover's below us on the table. But um, some other heads popping up as well. Some favorable results. St. Pauli tied. Uh, who else we got here? Werder lost. They had a, they were up a man. Heidenheim had yeah. 10 players. They still lost. Darmstadt, uh, St. Pauli with the draws. Very Bremen lost. Yeah. So the top yeah. three all, all struggle in dropping points. Yeah. Um, That's why it was huge. And yeah, great day for the movement, man. The, the movement, the Katuchi movement, the Katuchi movement's been on ice. What, what can you say? It's been on ice. It's it's been a it's been a rough rough year for us. Uh, but back with the vengeance, gets his move That's to right. Sandhausen for some playing time after that Turkey situation wasn't working. We saw like a couple bangers here and yeah. there, but just very limited appearances from out there. And uh, yeah. you know, hopefully he gets uh, some more starts and stuff. I know this was like a substitute appearance for him. I think was he starting? I think it was a substitute appearance. I think it was a substitute, but either way, hopefully either he doesn't way. play against us. A decently well taken goal. So, uh, you know, big appreciate him uh, doing us a favor. I'm so not used to seeing him with hair. You know, I'm so used to seeing him for so many years with a shaved head, whatever. So, um, but yeah, the current table. So it was big because we were what seven points behind first or eight behind seven behind first, six behind second and third. So with teams dropping and we got the, the big three points, we're only four points now behind Darmstadt, St. Pauli, and Verder, who are all tied for first, technically, or top three, all at 48. Nuremberg. Are ahead of us at 45. We're at 44. Heidenheim just behind us at 42. So it's it's getting tight again. It's always been tight, right? And uh, you're gonna say something? Yeah. And I, I told you, I, I do not want this to come down to us playing Nuremberg on the final day. Our yeah. friends at Nuremberg and, and them having you know to some have something to say about whether or not we go up or not. Uh, that's that's the nightmare scenario. So I'd like I would like hopefully to be in a comfortable position by then, and especially not if like Nuremberg are somehow like challenging up the table then too that would be kind of unfortunate but let me see if i can share this tweet because this would be the dream scenario of if we had if it was down to us in, in nuremberg uh you gets a, loaned back to schalke and then <laughs> it says imagine schalke and nuremberg uh both getting promoted at the last last game of the season it would take some points dropped by the top three but that i guess it's a possibility that would be nice to see both of us get promoted but i don't want to i don't want them to get promoted over us let's say that friends or not <laughs> <laughs> yeah for sure and like i said i don't i don't want them to have to be like the team that you know takes two points off us or three points off us on the final day and and changes the uh the standings ultimately 100 percent, 100 percent. next game is against hanover 96 it's 14th uh, place in the table at the moment i believe uh correct. decent decent defensively not great but certainly within reason they just really struggle to score goals one of the worst i think offensive teams uh in the league. So hopefully that leaky defensive issue that you were talking about the final couple of games of Gramatis, um, you know, kind of tough to tell if it's been remedied because we were yeah. just playing English dot. Like, you know what I mean? It's, it's, that's kind of like a tough gauge. Um, so uh, yeah, big test. Hopefully we can keep things tidy at the back and, and uh, get a result there too. Hey, Eric, I'm with you. If, if we both go up, that'd be great, but I don't want Norenberg to go in our place. Uh, be interesting. I had, like you said, like you said, Jack, I don't want to see this. we we'll come down to us against Nuremberg and winner take all. Oh, that'd be, that would hurt their friendship. <laughs> some, some bit. Um, yeah. Next game is against Hanover. It's this Saturday, 8 30 AM Eastern time, 7 30 Chicago land time. There will be a stream this time. Uh, unless I try to buy a house again, you know, who knows, who knows? Uh, but that's the plan at the moment. And the big news, of course, the bill in Congress right now, the uh, the, the Sunlight Protection Act or whatever it's called. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> but good news for us Chicago supporters, particularly for potentially the watch along live streams, is this would basically mean you know that we're we're starting some of these games an hour later than we have been. Yes. Uh, those six thirty yes. kickoff times would not be back. 
hopefully. Oof. So that'd be nice. Yes, that that is uh, one good thing, uh, and also more daylight at night, right? Uh, I don't like the. I'm a. I work early in the morning, so I don't like. I already work in the dark, but you know. Yeah, my eyes aren't really fully open until nine forty five anyway, so I don't really need to see on my way to work. I mean, it takes me a while to get going. But just imagine in the winter time; the sun doesn't come up until eight thirty in the morning. That's ugh. Like you said, your eyes don't wake up till then, so it doesn't affect you. <laughs> I'm actually drinking like cold brew with espresso every morning, bright and early, so I'm I'm usually good to go. All right. Uh, I just drink my black. You know my love for Duncan. When the Duncan sponsorship was announced at the Veltons Arena, that was, you know, I felt like that was designed to appeal to me specifically. Speaking of sponsors, we got a new sponsor, um, Cologne based. I don't know. Seg Cologne segways. How do you like segways. these segways? These are great. Segways are pretty good. Uh, Rive, Rive, Rive. We we came to a, a conclusion on the pronunciation, and now I forgot it already. Rive, Rava, Rava, Rava. All right. Uh, R E W E. It's uh. The the fame sponsor for Cologne, um, this uh, the team, not the whatever. Yeah, the supermarket. Fragrance. Yeah, the supermarket. Right. Uh, so yeah, we just we just joined up with them. So that's uh, another yeah sponsor for our training for tops us. and everything. So that's yep. we'll be on like our warm up gear when we you know go out probably like in the you know the the anthems or whatever before the game starts yep. that kind of a thing. Those situations obviously are training tops. So that's nice that we're uh, already bringing new sponsors on board i think there were some maybe like uh not leaks but you know like comments midweek that mm -hmm. were saying it sounds like um you know shock was pretty confident they're going to be able to recoup a lot of whatever the 30 million that we lost from gazprom was with a series of other people that are stepping forward yep this seems to be one right off the top i think some i think some shock fans were concerned initially that was going to be our primary kit sponsor and they're like cologne no but yeah i mean it, i don't really have an issue with it if it's just like you said like yeah. the training top situation so uh nice to see at present, it seems like it's Viva West, but we'll see if anything happens. Um, let's see. Eric says Nuremberg going down in '99 and Schalke in 2001. Last match there are two of the most dramatic turns events in Burns League history. Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, anything else? Quick podcast, but it was good. It's good. Good game or good result. Let's put it that way. Not yeah, much just, this week happened. Yeah, not, not a ton of action in the first half. To talk about it all happened in the second half. Um, you know, it wasn't always the most straightforward, but it's the result that we expected and. Uh, now, hopefully, we can get some consistency and pick up another result um, in Hanover. Yeah. I, I, the, the main thing is just like, how are we going to set up? What's the shape going to be? Are we going to continue to pursue whatever we looked like we were pursuing in the first half? Or are we going to just kind of revert to um, the system Gramasis was playing? Yes, 100%. And I'm trying to look up um, some of the quotes from Matthias or about Matthias Kreutzer. He obviously was on the sidelines this past weekend, and you heard a lot of good words from from the team about you know he brought good good uh, t tactics to the match and and a lot of calm uh, to the team and a lot of guys like Drexler and, and Tiao were praising him uh, highly uh, before and after the game. Uh, but as we mentioned in the opening, both Schroeder and Buskins will be back on the sidelines uh, this weekend, and uh, both will be in the press conference for the Hanover match. Uh, so that should be interesting. I'm curious to hear. Buskins for sure in the uh, in the press conference, but uh, yeah, excited. Uh, let's see, like you said, what the lineup's going to be. Hard to tell at this point, uh, but hopefully we see some more improvement defensively. Because again, I think that was the biggest thing for me in the last this game against Ingolstadt is that wasn't much improved, and it's against a team like Ingolstadt we got away with it. If it's anybody else, they would have scored at least a goal. Um, so we need to do better in that department. Whether that means a four four two or three five two, I don't know. The the, the final thing I'll mention is. Not a, not a um, particularly involved game for Torada, which is not, I don't think his fault was just kind of a lack yeah. of service and everything that's happening in the first half. But you saw goals from Drexler. You saw goals from Salazar. I mean, Torada has 19 of our goals in the Bundesliga. The, I think another seven may be coming from Bolter. Like, that's a huge percentage. That, I mean, obviously, that's how you would design most teams is like the striker. But I think we do need a little bit more production from other people at times. And it was nice to see a game where we had, you know, some of that goal scoring production from the midfield. A hundred percent. Um, you're right. Bolter leads the, or Bolter Torah leads the league, uh, 19 goals, 17 for Bergstaller, which is so crazy to me. Um, and love it. Bolter, eight goals, eight assists. He's now co lead, uh, with uh, or co lead for Schalke with Oyan. Um, actually, Nari from Dusseldorf is uh, tied with Kittle from Hamburg for most assists. So there's that. And Kira, he's in there too. Uh, Good talk, good talk. All right. <laughs> Let's just wrap this one up. Uh, keep this one short. Keep it under 45. That's the goal. So we're good. We're not going to get that here. Um, 
anything to plug or where can people find you on social media? Uh, nothing real to plug except for the start of the F1 season back this weekend. Uh-huh. Yeah, Richard and I, of course, both big F1 fans, as uh, listeners will probably have picked up on uh, <laughs> by now. Looking forward to the action going down in Bahrain in this new era. It'll be an interesting of, uh, era. Formula One. And Kevin Magnuson really back, back at Haas, which is great because I like seeing obviously K Mag the, the American team more than yeah, yeah, yeah. Did, so yeah, yeah, no, no for sure. Uh, obviously the big fallout with oh, you know, I did want to mention that real quick. Um Ingolstadt came out in the colors of Ukraine for this one, which is interesting. And they had their center logo or the center face off, what do you want to call it, on the pitch, they made it into a peace sign. So really um Get behind Ukraine and, and everything that's going on over there. So, sorry, we said Mazepin and kind of took it on this world. No, there. there you go. But uh, I said segways, segways, Jack, segways, Jack. But the F1, it'll be interesting. I'm really curious to see how it shapes up this year. So, we'll see. And then Drivers of Five, as always, for everybody else, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jack. Else. Wait, where, where can people find you? You didn't tell people where can find you. At JM Mangan, JM M A N G A N on Twitter. Very good. Uh, and as always, I'm at R underscore K H A R M A N. Make sure you follow Shock America on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, uh, and make sure you follow our YouTube page if you don't do it already. Uh, subscribe and like. It helps the algorithms, spreads the love to more people. More people need to find out about us, right? Uh, the Germans need to join, uh, join on with us, right? <laughs> All right. Uh, for Jack, I'm Richard. Uh, until the next podcast comes or the watch along, we'll catch you soon. Glue golf. Mm-hmm.